technical difficulties the first round. So this is round two for Dave's Devo. But I'm really excited to bring a lot of hope into what's happening into our, into our, you know, in, in our nation. And so it's just so crazy. It's a dumpster burn. Everyone knows it. And there's so much uh, lack of hope and just the COVID thing, the mask thing is just, you know, people are depressed. They have anxiety. Like we're, like we can, have, like everything in our life can be going well, but then we're just stressed about stuff. And that's when you know it's just weird, super weird times. And I'm going back to the 1960s. I'm admitting I'm probably a little bit older than most of you watching this. So in the 60s, I was actually walking on this green earth. Racial tension. I, I remember the uh, civil unrest, the government just wars. People thought like the world was going to end. But it didn't. And why didn't it? Because God's people prayed, honestly. And there was this revival that broke out in the 60s and 70s called the Jesus Movement. In fact, if you're a historical buff, there's been four major revivals in the United States of America. And this is the fourth one, the last one. We're looking for another one. But a lot of people think this was not a revival, but the largest revival out of all of them. It's on the front page of Time Magazine. It was a big deal. Tons of people got saved. Like God's church, like Jesus followers, like, like repented. They started witnessing and started bringing hope into the situations. They started taking their eyes off the circumstances and putting them on Christ. Okay. And so revival broke out in the church and it literally changed the landscape of our nation. Well, we need that same thing to happen today, but we need to pray. And I remember praying this prayer with my parents way back in the day at church. And it's Second Chronicles 714 and it's so it's so like it's so overused but it's so good okay but it says if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways god says then i will hear from heaven i will forgive their sins and heal their land and so that's the promise right there not only was for the nation of israel but I believe the principle applies that any nation that gives itself to God, like we're the Jesus followers in that nation, give themselves to God, God will hear our prayers. But it requires that we humble ourselves, that we repent, and that we expect and anticipate God doing great things. Because, you know, the first major revival after the cross of Jesus Christ, man, was, was with his, the people of God. It's recorded in Acts chapter 2. And it's when the Spirit of God just fell down on the people of God. And they just started living life, like, with God. And everywhere they went, just natural, normal conversations. Like, they would just be listening, and people would be like, oh, I'm stressed out. Well, let me pray, you know, Jesus' peace into that stress. Okay? So it's just kind of living that way. It just came naturally. It wasn't something they had to, like, check it off on a list. And it's basically was prophesied in Joel chapter 2. And let me just read this, because this is really where we have to go. This was written a few hundred years before Pentecost. And God says this, and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit, my Holy Spirit, on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also my maidservants and men servants, they will, I will pour out my spirit on, in those days on all people. And so that's still the promise that's available today. And that's what we have going for us. So today, to rise above your circumstances by looking at Christ. And maybe we should take responsibility for our nation. Maybe turn off the social media. And rather than blaming the conservative thinkers or the liberal thinkers, just kind of look in the mirror and say, I'm going to do my part with my family and with my church family. And we're going to take responsibility because we have this, all this authority in Jesus Christ. But we can't use this authority if we're just like people in the world. If we're just stressed out about just stuff that we shouldn't be stressed about. Because God's kingdom is able to work through us and in us for those around us. And so start actually thinking this way and, and uh, being like a, a true Jesus follower and bring hope into and so this, this, this happens in big ways and little ways, but it always starts with the little ways. And there's a promise that God makes in the Gospels that if, if you're faithful to me with the little things, 
I will give you big things. So here's, here's like a little thing, but it's really not a little thing. Like the people that you run into today, your family members, your friends, or just people, have a listening ear and maybe pray peace into them. Pray, you know, God's uh, grace into them, whatever they need. So I know I have the opportunity today because I, I my car is being worked on at the Ford dealership and there's a fellow there that uh, we already began a relationship just by talking. He doesn't know I'm a pastor. This is a really good thing, so don't tell him you don't know who he is. Anyways, but today I'm going to go back there and I'm going to just, I'm, I'm just asking the Holy Spirit provide an opportunity where I can pray something or bless him in the name of Jesus. And if it breaks out into something more, rack, literally talk about Jesus Christ and have you decided to, you know, that I'm just going to be listening for that. But I, this is just real natural. You don't want to be kind of like a freak, like so weird with people. They like avoid you. And so when you look at Jesus in the Gospels, man, he, he, when, he, when he shared about his father, I mean, it was typically natural, natural conversation because that was who he was. And so that's what God has called us to do. So do it today. Let me close this in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity to just speak your glory into what's happening in our nation. And we humble ourselves. We take responsibility. We want to repent from areas we have to repent from and just live for you in every moment. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now remember, we're not fighting for victory. We're fighting from victory. And you're going to see my fat fingers today because my top camera is not working. But you all have a great day.